Welcome to Crops, Cattle, and Charlie. I'm Charlie Martinez, and I'm joined today by Aaron Smith and the University of Tennessee Livestock Economist, Andrew Griffith, who's with the Department of Ag and Resource Economics. Uh, Dr. Griffith is going to be discussing retained ownership in depressed feeder cattle markets. So I guess one of the first things that comes to my head and trying to get this kicked off is what are some of the risks, what are some of the risks and potential benefits of retaining ownership in this type of market, Dr. Griffith? Well, the, the thing that sets us up for, for retained ownership in a declining market or a depressed market is if, if there are folks that have to move cattle, if they have to get rid of feeder cattle, um, you really hate to sell on a depressed market. And so uh, one of the benefits of, of retaining ownership is it gives you a longer marketing window for those animals. So essentially, if you take animals that have to be moved today or within the next couple of weeks, you can, you can essentially extend your marketing window by five or six months if you put them in the feedlot. And so that, gives, that would essentially give folks um, five to six months to see if that, that market will improve or to, to you know, hedge those cattle within that five or six months at some point uh, to, to achieve a higher value in those animals. You know, the risk of that is though, uh, a lot of people have never fed cattle. Um, they've never put cattle in the feed lot. They don't know how their cattle will perform in the feed lot. They don't know if they'll have good feed efficiency. They don't know if they'll have good carcass characteristics, which is what the packer is going to be looking for. And so, you know, you take on a different type of risk that you've never experienced if you've never fed cattle because you don't know how the cattle will perform. Okay, just so to just clarify on that, how would a Tennessee producer or producer in general go about retaining ownership? So there's, there's a lot of different ways. Um, we, no, number one, we have a program called the Tennessee Beef Evaluation Program, which is a program that I coordinate uh, with, and, and we work with Tri-County Steer Carcass Futurity in southwestern uh, Iowa, and we uh, put together truckload lots of cattle and we ship them to feed lots up there to farmer feeders. And uh, essentially, every, a producer can, can just consign those cattle there's no, no upfront cost for it. We send cattle uh, in five or six months, cattle are harvested. And, and in doing that, they also get back data on those cattle as far as production data in the feedlot, carcass characteristics uh, on the rail. And then they'll get financial data on those cattle on how they perform. Then there's, there, I mean, a, a more traditional method is, is just developing a relationship with, with custom feeders uh, whether that be in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, or Iowa, uh, and, and a few in Illinois, you know, there's a lot of people that are, that are feeding cattle. And, uh, you know, when, when you feed cattle with somebody, that they're essentially providing uh, an upscale hotel for cattle. And, and so making those connections, uh, I've, I've helped folks myself be in contact with people in, in other states, and, and that would be the, the method of going about that. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Griffith, for joining us, and thank you for uh, the viewers for joining us on Crops, Cattle, and Charlie. We hope you'll join us again. Thank you.